So this morning, I spent some time watching a TED Talk on the Crocheted Coral Reef. And how crocheting helps to give a 3D model for hyperbolic space. You now you have Euclidean space. You have spherical space, space. And then you have hyperbolic space. It all has to do with dimensions and parallel lines and how many other parallel lines can you keep in that same space, but they won't touch each other, you know, after dark in the bedroom when the parents are right next door. Important to note, Euclidean and spherical space have so far been easy to explain because there are physical objects that people can use to understand them. I get this information from the TED Talk. Hyperbolic space, however, has been very difficult to explain because there has been no physical object until the coral reef because nature presented this hyperbolic space. It was always available in corals and in sea slugs this space where you could have two lines, two straight lines, an infinite number of straight lines that within this space they would never cross. So while it was interesting, it made me just a little bit kind of, uh, because I'm not brilliant. However, what I am is frustrated. I got a great little crochet book. Creature crochet! You've got a cute little fish. Yay, cute little fish. Now this book comes in a kit. There's instructions for making said fish. The tools that came with the book were subpar. Didn't have quite enough hook. When I tried to pull the thread through, it would split. Um, I made my stitches a little tight. That was, I think, part of my own problem. If I'd made them looser, maybe not so bad. But here's what the fish is supposed to look like. The more I tried to follow the instructions, the harder it kind of became. Because no matter how much they say, refer to picture 1D. 1D is not close enough, it is not clear enough for me to truly understand what the hell they're talking about. So I kind of muddle through the best I can. And I got the fins done, and it was my first time transitioning from one yarn whoop, into another, the red to the orange, red to the orange, there we go, um, without having to sew those pieces on separately. They just, the whole thing was stitched together. But by the time I got to the fins, which took me far longer than they should have, I was just totally frustrated. It really wasn't coming out how I wanted it to. Like I said, the needle was subpar, so it really made the project more difficult than I think it needed to be. So I affectionately named the fish the Bitch Fish. Um, it has a name that is far less friendly for kids. You can explain the bitch fish, that's fine. But in order to get revenge on the fish, I got this far, and I said to myself, what else is it I can do to this fish? There he is, little tail, the big red lips, the fin on top, looking pretty good. What is it that I can do to really show my frustration with trying to put this fish together. That would be this. Do you recognize it? It's not just like some Dada-esque fish. Not some strange Dolly creation. If I put it like this, does it make any more sense? As it gets flat, looks a little weird with the big lips, I know. But honestly, what this fish really deserved to be was a flounder. 
He's a little fat for a flounder. But here we go. This is what frustration does to me. Is it brilliance?